And this summer, people are going to be shaking their heads when things start to potentially plummet. And uh, they'll be like, I can't be believe I just bought into this euphoric hype where I thought I was going to like... Hello everyone, Chris Vermulin, Chief Market Strategist of the TechnicalTraders.com, discusses the latest moves for stocks, Bitcoin, and gold, and what's next for market momentum. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. My point is, Chris, what is driving everything up at the same time? Do you have a theory? Yeah, well, to, to be honest, I think I would argue that. I wouldn't say everything is actually going up. I, I think you you rhymed off the things that are going up, but if we peel it back and, and get away from just the NASDAQ, the, the SP 500, which is super tech heavy, if you look at the equal weighted SP 500, it's really just come up to a double top. You look at the Russell 2000, it's nowhere near all time highs. Most sectors are struggling. so. To me, the market has got this whole this 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 you know it it's masking what's really happening. Most a lot of portfolios aren't doing that well unless you are super tech heavy and focusing on on the indexes, the big indexes themselves, because we're seeing the majority of sectors floundering. There, uh, they've had a rally, they've done well, but they're not near all time highs. So there's there's kind of a, a mixed bag depending how you look at it. But really, the markets have that vibe like they are hitting new all time highs. Um, but those who are heavy into stocks and smaller cap stocks are really struggling. They're not actually doing all that well. Okay, I do want to come back to specific assets and markets. So we'll talk about gold today. We'll talk about the tech stocks. We'll talk a little bit about Bitcoin, the dollar, um, and any other trades we're following. But just to come back to what you're saying. So yes, the small caps have been lagging. Some people have told me that because they're lagging, now's a good time to buy the laggers because eventually either... The large caps come down to meet the small caps or the small caps go up and meet everything halfway. So what's your take? Is this a good buying opportunity for the Russell? Uh, I, I really, I don't believe it is. I, if I, uh, I'll show you the chart. So if we take a look at the, uh, the chart here, this is the Russell 2000. And more or less, uh, it kind of put in a, a pretty major, major top back in 2020, uh, 2021, um, it's right through that whole window and it's broken down. It has a, it's had a very nice rally. We could argue it's, it's got a base uh, and it, it might want to rally higher, but overall it's at a major, major resistance area. I believe this is still kind of more so um, last people moving into the stock market. As you and I are recording this, we're seeing the major indexes are down, but the Russell 2000 is up today. And that I think we're seeing the Russell 2000 is the market is attracting a lot of small, aggressive traders, people who missed out on the big moves, people who haven't been involved in the markets. And I think we're seeing them move back into a very aggressive stocks. We have been seeing like the ARK ETFs move up and, and the Russell 2000, they're all kind of moving actually pretty much in sync together. Um, but but in the grand scheme of things, I think this market is, is, is actually kind of at resistance. I think it's a false kind of rally or it's not one that's supported for something really big. I still believe we're in this stage three topping phase. And this is what the the pattern of the Russell 2000 is doing. This is what a lot of different sectors are doing. And uh, we're nowhere really near the highs. And, and this is what happens from an emotional standpoint. Right now, people are in this complacency mode. You just mentioned people think it's it's an opportunity to buy. They think we're starting something new. And the market has put in a big base. It's held its ground. The NASDAQ and SP 500 are hitting new all-time highs, giving people this false sense of, Oh, the markets are really strong, but underneath, if you peel back the layers from those big, uh, big indexes and take the seven big tech com companies out of there, the market is struggling in a topping phase, but it's making people think, hey, the market's cooling off. It's taking a breather. This is an opportunity to get in and it's going to go higher. And I believe it's going to go the other way eventually. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm long the markets. I'm strong. I, I still think we're actually going to rally higher here for, I think, several more weeks. Uh, but but I do think it it is getting very close to the end. It feels like the last people are just a little bit of money squeezing into this market. We've had a couple big days where we've seen heavy, heavy selling volume across all asset classes. So that to me is a distribution day. There's some big funds out there starting to lighten their portfolios because I think they see the music kind of coming to an end. So I, I'm bearish on the market. I think short term we're going higher. Long term, I think late this year it could be very, very ugly for the stock market. 
Uh, but just because I'm bearish does not mean I am betting against this market. Again, we are long, we ride the trend. So there's a big difference between what I say and think is going to happen versus maybe the, you know, the positions we actually have going on. Okay. And people who are perhaps new to your work, you know, follow Chris, we'll talk about your work in just a bit. They might think, okay, well, that just sounds like a contradiction. Now, can you explain that thought process? Why would he be bearish? Why would he think a certain way, but do the exact opposite? Right. So trying to time a market, as everyone knows, is pretty difficult. It's a, it's a pretty high gamble. So technical analysis, which means I follow price, I follow cycles, sentiment, uh, money flows, all kinds of different things. Technical analysis gives me the insight to see what kind of power and strength is behind certain moves. And everything in the stock market, it, well, in the financial industry is linked in some way. It's called intermarket analysis. So if one asset class is going down, it could be gold, could be uh, stocks, could be whatever, that money that's coming out of that asset is gonna be flowing into another asset. So um, depending where money is flowing between all of these assets, we can get an idea as majority of money coming out of say the stock market and flowing into a bunch of defensive sectors or commodities like gold, things like that. Um, and so the nice thing about technical analysis is we follow trends. We, we can identify when something's going up, down or sideways. And if we want to take advantage of that asset, we follow, we jump on and we follow that trend. Now, we might be long the markets, which we've been long since November, and we're deep in the money. And I feel like we're getting real close to a top, but we're not going to get out of a trade just because we think um, the market's going to top out. And the technicals are slowly starting to weaken, telling us, hey, we're getting closer, but we never jump ship until the ship actually turns a corner. Once it's turned, then we get off and go, okay, it is actually going down. Let's get off. So you know, we don't ever try to pick a top or a bottom. Uh, that becomes a very painful game, especially if the market keeps going up. Like right now, a lot of people try and pick a top, they get out, they think it's done, and it just keeps going higher. And then they get left behind. So we're more of a trend following strategy and have a very good way to identify when that trend is breaking down through a lot of different layers of analysis. Can we um, take a stock and illustrate that point using a, an actual chart? Let's take NVIDIA, for example. It's breaking headlines, it's making the news. It's consistently, it's a stock that's consistently defied, not just gravity, but also expectations for their earnings. Um, their sales numbers are going through the roof. Um, they're just, they've just come out with a new chip. And the point I'm trying to make is that the company may have solid fundamentals to back this chart pattern, but despite even what may seem like solid fundamentals, you, you're a chartist, you take a look at what's going on or what has happened in the last four weeks Mm -hmm. And you might think to yourself, that looks strange. Would you, you know, if I were in, would I, should I be taking profits? Should I be cutting my, should I be cutting my losses if I were short? You know, a lot of questions might come into your mind looking at that chart. What are some questions you have as a trader, just looking at that chart? What would you like to learn a bit more? Or what more information would you need to gather about that particular stock before you either make a sell or buy or hold decision? So let's... All right, so if we take a look at the daily chart of NVIDIA and we look at this, this big rally that really took place from uh, mid-2022, uh, I like to use Fibonacci extension. I find this is one of the most powerful tools for identifying how much momentum, how much upside potential is in a trade. And so if we were to take this low and go up to this high that we saw in 2023 and come down to this low and carry it forward, it gives us an idea of where this market should run to. And um, you and I, I think, talked about this a while back. Long story short is if the market rallies up to this orange line, the 618, and it has a little bit of a pause, we almost always see it rally up to the 100% measured move. And how that, all that, how that works really is just based on the strength that it took in this first run. If this continues this chart pattern, it should have the same strength to run that same amount to the upside. And this is a very large chart pattern. The fact that we hit that, once we go beyond it, we're kind of in, in short term kind of, kind of bubble phase. Now, NVIDIA has got a really good story. I mean, they're kind of leading in the AI space. They have a new chip. I mean, the AI space, it has moved a lot in the last year. It's in everything. In fact, I think you might have saw a flash of, of this image here uh, a minute ago on my screen. Like AI is now in toothbrushes, like, like, where is it going to end? But all this stuff, all this AI stuff, all, most of it now to me is really just that. Just, that must be a marketing gimmick. I mean, what oh, AI yeah, yeah, and toothbrushes? Yeah. What 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 is it going to do? Figure out your brush pattern, 
and then yeah, like exactly. adjust its sensitivity. Like what is it? Gonna... And this is what I mean. Like AI is now getting squished into everything as a marketing tool. It, we're really, but we're really just scratching the surface. <laughs> I'm gonna look that up. Oral B with AI. I'm gonna look that up later. Yeah, anyway. yeah. <laughs> exactly. But AI has got so much room to go in the in the film industry and in every industry. Like we're really just tip of the iceberg. So there's a lot of you know. Uh, fundamentally, NVIDIA or even anything in the AI space, fundamentally, is, this market is just starting. I mean, it's going to be absolutely massive. So there could be one sector that bucks, say, a, a much larger market correction. And that's probably going to be the AI space because it's really like infinite at, at this point in my mind of how far AI, AI can actually go. But you wanted to know what would I knew, need right now to take advantage of this trade? So we could look at a, a couple different things here on this chart. Say for example, like right now, it's starting to look pretty strong. It is coming up. You could you could argue this is a bit of a double top. But if we take a look at this last run that really broke down from this low pre earnings, we had a run up. And I'm using Fibonacci extension here. I, I'm going to mark the high, and then mark this low. This is going to tell us where the next upside targets are for Nvidia, and that is the 100 or the 1,025 mark. And then the 1130, uh, 39 mark. So there's another fairly easy, potentially 20% upside in NVIDIA. And I've been kind of picturing this in my head for a while that we're going to see this one final push kind of going into May uh, or near May, just because seasonality wise is when we usually see the market start to stall out. Uh, and people are really going to pile in like hearing NVIDIA break to new highs. Uh, and, and this push, for some reason, I feel like people are super hypersensitive to it and they're going to pile in and we're going to see the stock market and, and potentially the Russell 2000 really kind of pop and squeeze higher and really get a lot of people involved. And then this summer, people are going to be shaking their heads when things start to potentially plummet. And uh, they'll be like, I can't be believe I just bought into this euphoric hype where I thought I was going to like, you know, nail it. <laughs> so, Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Chris Vermeulen. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.